what's up guys my name is Zach and today I am driving a 2012 Ford F250 XLT up front is a 6.2 liter gasoline V8 and down below is a six-speed automatic transmission now I am super excited to be driving this F250 for many reasons first of all this fills a gap in my F250 knowledge and reviews I've reviewed the earlier 2008 I've also reviewed a more recent 2021 but never something from the 2011 to 2016 era so I'm excited to share that with you today but if you would like your vehicle featured here on the channel you can submit it to my website zachpradle.com the submission form takes under a minute to fill out all I need is your approximate location make model and year of the vehicle and anything else you would like to share and you would get a video of your car just like the one you're watching now of this F-250. But let's get back to that 6.2 liter V8 under the hood. Well, it's known as the Boss, which is quite the awesome engine name. And it actually debuted in 2011 and it makes 385 horsepower, 405 foot pounds of torque. So it's definitely quite the little powerhouse underneath the hood. Boss engines are Ford's big displacement V8s. However, this is not the diesel. You could also find this in a diesel. However, the owner of this truck opted for the gasoline version. The reason for that is that if you don't tow all the time, diesel can be pretty expensive. And so the owner didn't really need it to be a diesel, so he didn't get a diesel. And I like that about this truck. It's also no slouch and it can tow over 12,000 pounds. So no worries in that category. Like I said, paired to it is a six speed automatic transmission. I quite like the transmission and it was the main transmission offered in these trucks. However, in other markets, you could find these in manual, but they never brought them here to the US. Last but not least, this F-250 is four wheel drive and we'll talk about all those selections a little bit later on. So how does it feel to actually drive the F-250? Well, it's a big truck. Now this does have a six inch lift on it, sitting on 35 inch tires. Sure, that does add to it, but it's a rough ride and it is big. The visibility is decent and I do have these really, really big mirrors, which certainly help out as well. If you're used to driving trucks, this won't be anything new. But if you're new to the world of heavy duty machinery for the road, buckle your seatbelt because this is going to be quite the large automobile. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. Off to the left is my tachometer. Up into the center, we have oil pressure, coolant temperature, transmission temperature, and fuel. And then off to the right, I have my speedometer. I do get a little information gauge down in the center. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control settings, and off to the right, I I have my voice media seek volume and okay this was an added on option above the xlt so this did not come standard on the xlt but something you could have asked ford to do off to the left i do have a climate control vent and this is an added plow controller because this truck is used in the winter time for plowing then i have my headlight settings and my gauge dimmer switch moving out of the door i have a giant panel just for the power mirror adjustments and then i have my power windows and power locks down below. Moving into the center, we do have a little radio and CD player, some favorites, and two climate control vents to the either side of that. Then we have our climate controls. Very, very basic. I don't get dual zone. I get where to send it up at the top. Fan speed to the left, temperature off to the right. That's it. Simple, basic, all you really need. Off to the far right of that, I do have my traction control and passenger airbag off, as well as a 12 volt outlet. And then I have my four wheel drive settings off to the left. So two high, four high, and four low, as well as I do have a rear locking differential. And the front hub lockers can also be electronically engaged as well, which is really, really nice to see. I then have my trailer brake adjustments in the center, a little space filler slash coin holder, another 12 volt outlet underneath the four wheel drive settings, and then the center console itself. We do have four cup holders right here. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test and it fits so long as you remove the rubber liner. So if you take the rubber liner out, the big friggin' bottle passes in the 2012 Ford F-250. 
Then we have a giant center console and we'll talk about the seats. The seats have Carhartt covers on them to protect them because this is an actual work truck that is used every day for work. And so to protect the seats a little bit and make them easier to clean, the owner, Ted, has put seat covers on. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do some back seat reviews. So I was told it would be easier to come in from the passenger side. And I guess that's true, but also not. We're in the back of the F-250. Uh, these seats are pretty terrible. You could put someone back here if you either dislike them or if you really have to, but I would not recommend it. I have two vents back here and a 12 volt outlet, interestingly enough, and I can manually crack these windows open if I want, but I don't want to spend more time back here than I have to. Let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the bed and cargo space. So there's nothing really too interesting or crazy about the bed. It does have a fifth wheel hookup. This is not factory, but I had Ted leave the fifth wheel in just to kind of show you how cool it is. Other than that, nothing really too crazy. It's a work truck and it does the job. Now we got to talk about the looks and this has been modified. Like I said, that six inch lift and 35 inch tires but also the front and rear bumpers have been swapped out those were not factory ford options however i really really like the look of this the stock look of the f-250 from this era i think was really really nice i think it was subtle enough but also beefy enough i think it was a really good middle ground and the fronts of trucks are just billboards nowadays so i feel like this still had some styling to it which i quite like but now let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think driving this ford f-250 from 2012 well first of all i do want to give a little bit of consumer advice this body style started in 2011 and if you're planning on buying something like this i highly recommend staying away from the 2011 year specifically the very first year of this body style was problematic to say the least they had a lot of manufacturing issues they had engine issues and although the chassis doors and cab mostly carried over from the 2000s anything new that they bolted this truck pretty much didn't work so they are very problematic. There were several recalls with them and I would just try to avoid 2011. They sorted everything out by 2012, which is this truck. So just a little bit of consumer advice. But what do I think driving this truck? Well, I really like reviewing actual thorough work trucks because yes, it's nice to drive the F-250 Platinums. It's nice to drive these big honking trucks that are getting close to $100,000, but that's just not the status quo. This is an actual truck that an actual person would buy to do actual work. The people that buy the Platinums, they're not going to the job sites. They're not towing fifth wheels through mud and muck. They have polished boots and freshly starched jeans. The men and women that drive this truck, their boots are dirty, their jeans are a little ripped, but they're real people. So a lot of the time when I review cars, I review a lot of dealership cars and a lot of press cars. When I get a press car, it is freshly detailed. There's not a speck of dirt in the carpet or on the windows. It's a very sanitary experience. And that's cool, that's good, but you don't really get to see the car as it's going to be, as it's going to live its life. I love reviewing work trucks because this isn't dressed up for the camera. This is authentic. If it would have snowed this morning, this review would have been called off so the owner could take this to go plow some snow. When I'm done with this review, the owner is going to take it to work every single day next week, the week after that, and the week after that. There is no filter on this truck. It's raw, and I love that. I love driving cars that have had an entire life before I get my hands on it. Much like I love sitting and chatting at my local VFW, much like I love reading about history and seeing it in museums and at historical sites, that's how I feel driving and in this truck. It's good at its job. It's very, very good at its job. And I can't ask it for much more than that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ted for letting me take out his F-250. I also reviewed his 1979 F-250 last year. So this is just the evolution of another truck that he owned. And I think that is the coolest thing in the world. This truck actually also has that same roll bar from the 79 in this, because he actually sold that 1979 and it was parted out eventually. So that roll bar on this truck is the same roll bar from that truck. So this roll bar has been in two reviews, which I think is kind of funny. Ted's an absolute 
absolutely awesome guy, awesome to work with. I can't wait to film more stuff with him and just make more content. Ted, you rock. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.